welcome to the uh, Buildings, Facilities, Capitals, uh, yeah, Buildings, Capital and Expenditures Committee of March 18th, 2021. Um, we'll start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance the flag. to the flag of the United, the United States, States of America. America. To the Republic. To the Republic. Republic. Just stand. 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 One nation. One nation. There you go. Visible. Liberty. 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 Justice for all. Thank you. Uh, so uh, uh, no open meeting uh, that is still being um, uh, postponed uh, due to the current COVID issues. And um, so uh, we have, uh, we have a uh, on the agenda for uh, for meeting minutes, we have three meetings worth of meeting minutes. Um, has anyone not had a chance to take take a look at those? So, we'll, if you, uh, Aaron, do, do you want to maybe take a look at them as as we go through them now? Is that is that okay? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. All right. So, um, we'll start with October fifteenth, twenty twenty, and. Um, let's see. Do I take a motion to review or a motion to or just a motion to accept? So just a motion to accept, right? Just take a motion to accept if there's no changes. Right. Okay. So bear with me for one second. I'm just trying to open mine up. Okay. There we go. So uh, we'll start with page one of six. Um, any comments, concerns, questions on that? Just the uh, second paragraph, uh, correct Frank Lynham's name. There was an extra letter in his last name. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, page two of six. Any questions? I'm just gonna change uh, K, uh, uh, K Lytle to Mr. Lytle. Uh, okay, uh, so no, no questions, comments, concerns on that. Uh, Don Essen, da, 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 page three or six. Uh, the second paragraph, the grant was only $400,000, not $4 million, although I wish. <laughs> uh, $400,000. Would have been nice. Yeah. It's a lot of paving. <laughs> <laughs> not enough, Justin. Not enough. No. <laughs> I'm just going to change the K to, to Mr. Cleary. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, uh, move on to page four. I'm just going to capitalize route, route 14. Any questions, comments, concerns on that? I'm going to add a space in between the last two paragraphs. Okay, page five of six. Okay, so Lucci, yep. Yeah. Gonna add another space between the last two paragraphs. Any questions, comments, concerns on that? No. In page six, last page. All right, no questions, comments, concerns. All right, bear, bear with me while I try to save this. File, save. I know. Save. I'll uh, entertain a motion to accept uh, the October 15, 2020 meeting minutes as uh, amended tonight. So moved. Second. Justin and Josh. 
Uh, all in favor? <clears throat> uh, Justin. Yes. Lincoln. I'm actually going to abstain since I thank you. Uh, yep, on the record for abstaining. Oh, write, they're going to write this down. Uh, Josh, did I get you yet? No. Yes. No, yes. Uh, Robert? Yes. Aaron? Yes. And Dave Cordero, yes. So that's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, two, four, six. It's a five, zero, one. We can have stating because he was not present. Okay. Working. Okay, we'll move to the November fifth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Meeting minutes. And we'll start on page one. Any comments, questions, concerns? Okay. Page two of four. Uh, on page two, the Plymouth County Treasurer is Tom O'Brien, not uh, Peter. Yeah. Yes. Uh, just a typo at the last sentence. I've taken out that N after Mr. Oh, it's going to be. That's probably Greno. Greno? Okay. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Uh, down on this is still page two, right? Yeah. Bottom of page two. Uh, Chief Greno is the WEMA director, not MEMA. Yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah. It's a big promotion. <laughs> Okay, moving on to page three. Questions, comments, concerns? Uh, the third paragraph from the bottom uh, begins Mr. Evans. Uh, the selectman didn't want to call a meeting for every COVID expense, not, not a town meeting. We didn't want a selectman's meeting for each one of those. Uh, okay, items. so change town to BOS. Okay, anything else? Okay, page four of four. All right, questions, comments, concerns? All right, uh, none, uh, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Justin, second. Anyone? Anyone? Second. Uh, Josh, second. All right. Uh, roll to call vote. Justin? Yes. Lincoln? Abstain. Josh? Yes. Bob? Yes. Aaron? Yes. And uh, David? Uh, yes. So that's a 501. Lincoln abstaining because he was not present. Okay. Perfect. Save. And moving on to December, uh, December 3rd, um, I just noticed that the date is incorrect. That's yeah, the date says November 5th. Yeah. I just want to make sure this isn't a cut and paste issue where it's, um, we're looking at this. All right, so these are definitely different notes. Okay, so change that to December 5. Okay, any other comments, questions, concerns, changes on page one of five? Okay. 
H2. Questions, comments, concerns? That was a lot of them. Page three. It's going to remove that space between the first two paragraphs. <clears throat> Questions, comment, concerns? Done. <clears throat> page four or five. Uh, page four. Yes, fourth paragraph from the bottom. It should be Community Preservation Act, not preserve. Yeah, good catch. There's also a typo, uh, a couple lines above that. After quote. Or the roof. Yeah. Community. Sir. Okay, anything else on page four? Page five. That's Fred. Uh, sorry, I think, I, I don't know if we're on page three or four here, but I, I have three or five and it looks like uh, down the bottom of that page, it says Ken Lytell. I believe the Lytell is spelled wrong. Should be L-Y-T-L-E, I believe. Oh yeah, that's right. It's page three. Okay. Yeah, down the bottom. Hi, Fred. Can you hear us? And it's 544. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to try and stay. All right. We can hear you. So uh, we're just finishing up the uh, December 5th meeting minutes. Um, that last paragraph uh, uh, typo. Uh, Heads coming in to explain T H E R E. I'm going to change that to T H E I R. There are article two items. Uh, light bulbs. T L E. Ah, uh, you know what? This for some reason my spell check keeps changing it. L Y T L E. Okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, uh, anything else on page three? We just went back. Page four. I think we uh, we covered again. Anything else? Page five. All right. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to accept December fifth, twenty twenty meeting minutes as amended. So moved. Justin. Second? Anyone? Second. Who was that? It was Aaron. Aaron. Uh, okay. Uh, roll call vote. Justin? Yes. Lincoln? Stan. Josh? Yes. Bob? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Fred, um, since you're here, you can vote in any manner that you seem fit. Uh, I'm going to abstain. Or actually, I read the minutes. So, uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So it's an approval. Uh, Dave could approve. So, one, two, three, four. So it's a 601. Lincoln abstaining from not being present. Yeah. Go ahead and save. Page five. All right, so that makes three, three meetings down. Um, the recording secretary mentioned that she's going to have a bunch more coming and uh, feels like feels like three might be uh, anything more than three may be pushing it. So we'll, I'll, I'll uh, limit it to that if, if, if more come in. Uh, let's So now we have uh, on the agenda, Lincoln, do, do you have anything for the uh, town administrator report? Uh, sure, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I just have a few things I'll mention. Um, a lot of them are not directly capital related, um, but you know, as the members of the committee know that obviously how the, with how the operating budget uh, shakes out obviously has a pretty significant impact on the amount of free cash and thus 
obviously uh, impact on the, the capital decisions. So uh, just to make sure everybody on this call is aware of where we're at. So the there will be a joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee on April 13th, where I and Ken will be presenting a uh, recommended balanced budget. Um, the key component of that is obviously the school's budget. Uh, last night, the Regional School Committee um, certified an amount um, for a recommended budget uh, per the law and DESE regulation, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education regulations for 45 days but prior to town meeting. So um, that number is, uh, that number would have absolutely a significant impact, a very significant impact on our operating budget. And thus, you know, the conversation about what funding sources um, would be necessary to fund um, our operating budget for fiscal year 2022. So I think all of that is fluid, but just so folks, you know, have a concept as to what the timelines are and some of the, you know, timelines of when we'll have a clearer picture as to whether, um, you know, free cash, some amount of free cash may be necessary to uh, fund a balanced budget or what other funding mechanisms will be needed to fund a balanced budget. I can give you a brief small preview in that it will almost certainly needed be needed to fund a balanced budget, some, some portion, um, but just heads up. Um, and so in, in the, the, the two other things I just wanted to mention and make sure the committee members knew. So uh, Chairman Codero and I had a brief conversation about this before, but um, just wanted to mention that uh, the, the selectmen are gonna be receiving a draft uh, uh, town meeting warrant at their meeting this coming Tuesday. And included in that, um, something Dave and I talked about and sort of thought about a little bit, but included in that, I, I intend to include in that a, um, an article to make some tweaks to the, um, this committee. Uh, in particular, I, you know, I'm welcome to, if people feel really strongly against it, you know, then, I'll drop it, but I, I know I always forget um, what the name is and it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. So I was going to suggest just the capital committee. I'm open to, uh, so changing that <laughs> and just calling it the capital committee or, you know, whatever, capital planning committee, whatever you want to call it. I think a capital committee is kind of the easiest thing, but looks like Dave agrees, but I'm open to uh, other ideas over the next couple of days. If anybody has any other brilliant ideas, um, you know, we'll, we'll, the, I think sort of the, the other sort of substantive change um, that Dave and I spoke about a little bit, you know, I'm welcome to input from this committee, but one of the things in the charge from back at annual town meeting in 2015 is that this committee not only makes recommendations on what capital projects should be funded at town meeting, but also manages the implementation of capital projects. I would suggest that, um, that doesn't really make sense from the perspective of managing a capital project, that that should be a, a town, you know, a, a, a management function, therefore the board of selectmen um, and at the direction of the board of selectmen, myself and Bob and, you know, whomever else, Josh, when it's a, when it's an IT project, the schools, obviously when it's a school's project. So I, I'd suggest that I, I don't, I didn't want the committee to be surprised um, that I'm intending to, Put, have that on this draft warrant, but um, just wanted to mention it. Happy to talk about it further. Happy to take, you know, criticism uh, about it. And and the, the other thing is, and I meant to talk with Fred about this earlier, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but Fred, so you're both appointed by the Board of Selectmen to this committee, but also a, like quote unquote non-voting liaison from the school committee, I believe. Uh, right? Liaison from the school committee. Uh, yeah. So as we as on and tried to uh, define what that role means and more of a conduit of information. Yeah. Uh, so that when we're having a building of facilities on those articles to be able to uh, perhaps uh, explain, you know, exactly what those are and be the conduit or get the proper personnel such as we've had Ernie Sandlin come in uh, you know, speak with Steve, 
uh, Burke with technology so that we can get a better idea and perspective uh, as to you know what the needs are and what things are to try and relay it better to this committee and also go back to the school committee and let them know what this committee is doing uh, you know on a more rap basis now on the flip side as well for the regional school district I chair the facilities subcommittee uh, is one of my uh, pet projects for many years now. And the Whitman Building, uh, the Feasibility Study Committee of Building Project or whatever we call ourselves, uh, I'm chairing that as well, you know, so. So, I mean, wait. so I would suggest for simplification purposes, it says there's nine members. Um, it's a little maybe unclear about, you know, liaison voting member. What I would suggest and, you know, uh, uh, what, I, what I would suggest is that simply the there be a member of the school committee, which is a voting member of this body, and whether that member is a, is appointed by the school committee or the board of selectmen is kind of beside the point. Obviously, Fred, you know you're an able member, and you know, but so that's what I would suggest: just clarify it, simple. Um, it's an I member committee, so and it's sort of the way you know. And if you want to clarify in that regard, yeah. I don't want to be the liaison. Oh, okay. Uh, I <laughs> Sorry, we didn't really talk about else. that. Nobody so. else would volunteer for it. I got it. Uh, so that's because I wanted to alleviate that off of my shoulders. I have far more interest in the overall picture of this committee. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I still care about the schools, but in performing this town function, yeah, I look at the overall picture and are far more enthused at the overall picture than just a handful of uh, facilities uh, uh, articles that come out of the school committee on an annual basis. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, you know, we can all chew on that for a day or two and or you know longer. But I'm I'm just uh, and then the final piece of that is that the town meeting um, article specifies that our capital level is a useful life of five years or ten thousand dollars. I think time has marched on. Inflation has occurred. Generally speaking, that a, a capital item is viewed by most governmental entities now at a minimum of twenty-five thousand dollars, and that's what I'm going to suggest to the board. But again, you know, none of this is set in stone. It's not, you know, make or break. I'm just, I just want to make sure, you know, that this committee knew that that was happening before it happened, and um, uh, so so that's that. Um, and then one of the unrelated item, um, I just, uh, what else I want to mention? Maybe the, oh, I'm sorry. One other thing, which is just that the, the, we've had a, um, we've had a, a resident who, I, in my opinion, is, would certainly be well qualified to serve on this committee to fill the vacancy, the existing vacancy. His name is Justin Casanova Davis. Um, he's, uh, he has a career in municipal government um, elsewhere. Uh, a recent move to town. I think he certainly has the knowledge to, to um, you know, to make a significant contribution on the committee. So that is going to be, that is also on the uh, Board of Selectmen uh, agenda for Tuesday night to consider his appointment. So I just wanted, again, that is one of the, this committee to know that ahead of time. Um, so, you know, obviously happy to take any questions or comments about any of that um, that anybody wants to talk about. Uh, any any. Uh, Questions? Go ahead, Brad. Uh, the one, uh, the one question I have with the uh, dollar amount with the capital item. I know in our regional agreement, uh, we do define it a little bit differently. Uh, capital expenses being something greater than five thousand uh, dollars. Given the uh, age of the Hanson buildings or building in particular, uh, I would just want to be cautious that we didn't end up with a money pit out of our operating budget with right. projects over at Indian Head that it, there were plenty that don't quite meet that $5,000 threshold right. and we're trying to get reports so we can show exactly what we're spending. Right. Uh, but where that- And yeah, and this this wouldn't, it, it, this definitely wouldn't have an effect on anything in Hanson. I just want to make sure it doesn't, but, uh, right. you know, uh, give people uh, different thoughts, so to speak. Understood. Yeah, understood. Go ahead, Justin. Uh, Josh. 
So uh, I just want to quickly on that same question, sort of uh, on the dollar amount, is that, does that mean that the uh, this committee would not be responsible for reviewing any uh, capital requests that are below 25,000? Well, of officially according to the purview. I mean, of course, you know, I think as a practical matter, if this committee wanted to have some discussion about anything that, you know, that's could be considered to be capital in nature, then of course it could and should. I, I, I just think as a realistic matter, 10,000 is too low. Um, so, you know, in the immediate term, are we going to in this fiscal year 22 budget, 2022 budget, are we gonna be able to achieve getting everything into operating budgets that, that's below $25,000? No, but I wanna set an idea of where we're going and where I'd like to go in future operating budgets and future capital budgets, because I think it's the right thing to do from a management perspective. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's not like if this changes, you know, on May 4th, I'm not gonna say like, oh, it's not a capital item anymore. You know, I, th this is like a, more of like, in my mind, a policy statement of where we'd like to be in the coming years in, from my perspective. But, you know, if, if any, if I, I think just best practices, it should be definitely higher than 10,000, um, you know, but, uh, you know, but, but again, I mean, it's, I think it's an important conversation to have about what the right level is. So Lincoln, are you just are you just talking about the definition of a capital uh, what, what 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 falls in under capital or, or the whole process of 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 a department requesting uh, obtaining items under twenty five thousand? Well, so 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 I'm so I'm I'm, ta I'm talking about referring back to Article thirty eight of the twenty fifteen town meeting that that lays out you know what this committee's purview is what its membership is. And then what, and then, you know, that capital goes on to define what a capital item is. So, yeah, I mean, I guess as a technical matter, that would mean that items below $25,000, um, you know, would no longer officially be considered as capital. However, you know, I, and I can't imagine anyone else would argue, you know, if there's a purchase of that's $20,000 and this committee wants to talk about it, then, you know, I think it should talk about it. I'm just trying to, you know, that article sets the town's policy of what a capital item is. And I think that's too low, that's all. Okay, so, so to say that a different way is that if a department head felt that they needed a, 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 an item, a capital item, a, an item that would be considered cap, an item um, under $25,000 and they had that they had that amount within their operating budget that they could go ahead and purchase that without without discussion. Well, I mean, that I, I think as a policy goal, you know, going forward, that's that's a that's an important conversation to have. And again, maybe twenty five thousand isn't the right level. You know, maybe we're more comfortable with twenty thousand right now. You know, but but in my you know, in in my professional opinion, ten thousand is too low. So, you know, like, like I said, you know, maybe 25, if, if I'm hearing from the committee that the level should be 20,000, like, fine, you know, I, I understand the point. I'm just saying, I think we need to make a policy adjustment in general. That's all. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, we still have to follow procurement laws and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, 100%. So the, the state procurement law is clear. So everything over $10,000 needs to, you know, it needs to be either bought on a state contract that the municipality has access to or has three has three you know competitive bids um, this is just defining for us the town of Whitman what we consider to be a capital item funded that way versus a non-capital item okay go ahead Fred uh, could there be a third category and I'm just thinking you know putting on my uh, cheap hat for a second police or fire or whichever they have purchases that are 15, 20 grand. And they say, well, we don't have enough room in our operating budget or it's a one-time expense. So would we want to, and it wouldn't be under our purview, it would probably fall under the FinCom at that point in time. So they would end up having to maybe allocate more money to their operating budget 
and then they would continuously have it even though it was a one-time expense. So I don't know if there's a trigger or a way to do it that if they have a one-time expense that maybe isn't under our purview, but they're able to put a separate type of an article on uh, and the raise and appropriate is right through the levy or the operating budget of the town, you know, but it's a one time it, it's there and then it quote unquote disappears for the next year. Yeah. And so, sure. So, so, so one thing I want to be clear on is, you know, so even if it's in the operating budget, by no means would I in the future want to include something that is, if it's a one-time expense. So just, so this is more of a budgeting discussion rather than a, you know, how do we buy it discussion. So for example, so I think a good example is turnout gear um, at the fire department. Okay. So this is not a one-time expense, you know, ideally under ideal conditions, we'd be buying X number of sets every single year and it's an operating expense, right? So in that case, yes, the policy, the, the place where I want to get to as a town is that that is we know that turnout gear and we know we should be purchasing X number each year and that that the amount needed for that X number each year is built into the fire department operating budget and is no longer a capital item because by definition, if it's this ongoing expense, it's not a capital item. It's not one, it's not one time, right? It is in fact an operating budget. Conversely, let's use another example of this isn't really a capital, but you know, something that's traditionally been been funded in an outside article would be monies for our five-year revaluation uh, through the assessors and the board of assessors and the, um, so that is not a capital item, just, you know, it doesn't have a useful life of more than five years. I mean, just, okay. So, but it, you know, from my perspective, from a sound budgeting practices, it should be in the operating budget. But the next year, it won't be in the operating budget, and it won't be in an operating budget that is recommended by me because it's not needed the next year. So just because it's in there one year doesn't mean we're building from there next year. It means, you know, we're not talking about zero-based budgeting, but we're talking about sort of modified zero-based budgeting. Like, you know, what is it we need? Oh, we don't need that. We did that last year. The revaluation isn't for another five years. It's not going to be in the next year's operating budget, but it is an operating expense, not a capital expense. Okay. So is that, is that clear? clear? Yeah, and just yeah. Uh, we had that mechanism that it could be separated that way because everyone looks at, you know, yeah. where do you start next year? You start at what your last operating budget was, or what your article to. Yeah, and, and part of this is like the goal of, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I don't want to budget that way going forward. You don't necessarily start at where you were last year because you start at what do you need to provide the same level of services, not what was the dollar amount. And maybe that number is less, yeah, and that, and maybe that's it's more. a very sound, good way of thinking. Yeah. I just don't know that we've honestly- It's different. It's, it's different. And I'm not saying we're doing it right now. I'm just saying, this is like laying out what, you know, where I recommend we go in the future. Mm -hmm. It's not, we're going to do this tomorrow. It's putting in places the blocks to work towards where I believe we should be going. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, we've had this discussion in years back in the finance committee, and, and we, we've had a very similar, a brief conversation about this in, in this committee, this fiscal year, uh, when we were talking about a capital improvement plan. And, 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 and my thought was, was very similar to what you're, you're saying. However, when it becomes when it comes to those reoccurring costs like turnout gear, ballistic vests, um, you know, something that has a, 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 a distinct lifespan, that you would that that we would try to get them on a schedule, um, you know, it, it, where where you wouldn't you wouldn't buy all of them all one year. You would buy a certain amount each each uh, an equal amount each year right. and let that go on. So that way. Your, 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 your budget, it's a known expense, not necessarily operating, but it's a known expense that needs to be paid for. And that way you're, you don't have these spikes and drops in, in, in spending. You would have a nice level, nice level spending uh, issue there. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And that's exactly one of the policy goals 
that would be achieved by this kind of change. Right, and, and, and that was that was kind of the uh, uh, the theory behind the um, the ambulance, uh, 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 the new the new ambulance account, um, where it was you know a certain amount was going to go into that. Uh, of, you know, th throughout a life, you know, divided by the lifespan of a, uh, uh, an ambulance. And then when that ambulance was needed to be purchased, you would have that money in an, in an account. Right. Yeah. yeah and, and, and so I'd, I'd use another example. So this is like, this is sure down the line, however far down the line. Um, one of the things the Madden report talks about, which I agree with is, you know, the, the discussion about cruisers. And so, this is a ongoing expense that we know we need to do on a regular basis. And so in that respect, it's not really capital. Now, of course it is capital and it's gonna to continue to be capital for the long foreseeable future because of the size of the cost. But that's you know, something, for example, that the Madden report says, you know, hey, this is sort of really an operating ex expense, not a capital expense. We're not going there now because we can't financially. But you know, it's the same. It's the same idea, basically, right? right. Um, and uh, and I'm sorry, just uh, just before I before I forget, just one unrelated issue. Um, I know, uh, Dave, you saw that list of um, requests, capital requests from departments and from the schools um, that I sent. So I'll leave it up to you as to how you want to distribute that to the committee. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, just to uh, hopefully put a, 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 a an ending to this uh, the, the discussion. Um, there was discussions about whether or not you could uh, you could do that same type of thing, uh, allocate a, an equal amount of monies toward a toward a reoccurring cost, but instead of putting instead of putting into an operating expense, you're putting into a, a, a you know. You, you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't put it into a line item unless unless you were able to pull that out of article two because if you just left it in article two it would, it would revert back to free cash at the end of the year but so so the questions was was the wasn't it was it so for example like you know the turnout gear say say this is a made-up number say a hundred thousand dollars for every single fireman's turnout gear and, and they you know Thankfully, they they're not that expensive. But yes, no, I'm right. Uh, right. I know. I'm just trying. I'm, just, I'm, I'm using tens I'm because I'm, I'm not very good at math. Yeah, so, so, so they last ten years. So that means you're gonna spend ten thousand dollars. You're gonna save up ten thousand dollars each year to 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 do that. Is there an ability to take that made up number ten thousand um, dollars, put it, keep it in Article Two, but then not leave not leave it there at the end of town meeting because if you leave it there it will revert to free cash but but then put it somewhere so so it, so it automatically shows up on article two but at the end of town meeting it goes it goes into a different a saving you know a, an account that gets drawn drawn from so 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 i think so part of the answer to your question is that under this scenario we're saying it isn't capital anymore because it is an ongoing expense right and so if it is in the operating budget, and we know that we need to just to say, it's not, I don't believe it's this many, but just to use a number, we need to buy five turnout gear each year. If it's in the operating budget, then you have it available until June 30th. You have it available for that whole year and you go out and do the purchase because that's what we want you to do. It is true that if it was in a capital item, it would be available past that fiscal year but we don't, we don't really want to pass that fiscal year because we want to be on a schedule to, from a, because that's the right thing to do, right? And so, yes, a capital item would be continue to be available and not revert to free cash if it wasn't used at, at the end of the whole fiscal year. But the idea is, no, we want it to be used because we need that as a recurring thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I, I think what you're saying is it makes sense to put it in the operating budget because if they don't use it, it's going to go, it's going to go back to free cash anyways. So right. it incentivizes them to, to use it, use it properly. Well, it's kind of the whole point behind you don't want capital items, capital articles to be sitting around for five years because, you know, because, Hey, we told town meeting that we needed this thing and then we didn't buy it. Well, I guess we didn't need this thing. And, and that's a, 
you know, and maybe things changed and we didn't need that thing and fine, we'll revert it and reuse that cash. Um, but otherwise, I guess we didn't really need it, right? If we didn't, if we didn't, if we didn't buy it in, in, you know, in a, in, in a year or two. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. Charles, did you have a question? No, I'm just going to give you another example. I mean, like the technology stabilization fund we have, I mean, we had a hundred thousand dollars in it back in 2014, or I should say $90,000 in 2014, we replaced the core networking, uh, you know, at the, at the town hall. And, uh, you know, the balance was, I think, $810, I think, in 2000, uh, FY15. And, uh, you know, we're up at $847 in 2021. We haven't put any money in that technology stabilization account as a savings account, if you will, to, um, you know, uh, do another replacement of equipment at some point in, in the, you know, in the future. So uh, we would have to basically raise and appropriate money uh, or utilize free cash in order to, you know, fund a significant uh, project uh, if we don't continue, if we don't start putting money back into that account. Well, and the, and right, and so the longer part of, we don't, we don't, you know, <clears throat> the town, like almost every municipality in Massachusetts is in a difficult fiscal situation this year. But part of the longer term thinking behind all of this is having stabilization, having a, you know, a stronger capital stabilization fund for exactly what we're talking about. Absolutely. Right? So, um, you know, we can't do that this year with the financial realities, but that's the plan you know, when we can do it. Okay. There was something, there was something, in, uh, what was the, the last, the, the unrelated subject that you, that you mentioned? No, just that I, I'd, I'd sent to you, Mr. Chairman, the, you know, the, right. the list of, uh, yeah, capital requests. Yeah, I, I didn't have, I didn't have a chance to take a look at that, but yeah, I, I'm going to, I'm going to distribute that along uh, side by side to uh, what, what we received as capital requests uh, just so this committee has a comparison, just to make sure that this whole committee that we're on the same page as uh, uh, of uh, with the board of selectmen in terms of what came in, what came in. Yeah, and and, and by all means, it, it definitely it, this should not have happened. But in case it did, in case you got something that I didn't, um, obviously we don't want it to fall through the cracks. If right. yeah, yep. so yeah. Are you speaking just of the schools or of everything? everything. I know the schools had you know, quite a bit, uh, or what do we have, five or six or something like that on there? Yeah, we got that letter from, I believe it was Jeff, yes. Yeah, uh, and I know copies of those that also went to you, Dave, and I think you distributed that to the committee yep. as well. Uh, yep. You know, so everyone's quote unquote on the same page with that, uh, uh, with those. Now, from what I've always been told, as a regional school district, the region has the right to place directly onto a warrant an article for capital expense. They send it over to the Board of Selectmen, et cetera, as a courtesy, but they have the right to place it on there. Uh, I don't know if that's legal, you know, 100% proper or not. That's what was said in the past. And, sort of confirmed by a uh, school committee member at the time who was a uh, attorney as well. So I don't know if that's something that would be of interest to you, Lincoln. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, 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 uh, I, I don't know if that's the case or not. Um, You've always worked. You know, so well. but we, yeah. I guess, I guess in the, in case the board of selectmen doesn't want to put one of the school committee requests on there, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And until, until that time, I, I, I won't cross that bridge. <laughs> it, it's never so, happened. And we've always, yeah. you know, yeah. along fabulously when it comes to those items, um, yeah. you know, as far as that goes. I mean, generally speaking, as I'm sure everybody, all the members of the committee know, you know, generally speaking, the selectmen couldn't control the war the warrant with the exception of any initiative petition articles, but by all means, that may well be the case legally, Fred. And you know, we'll we'll cross that bridge if we have to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so any other? Uh, so Lincoln, do you, do you have anything else on your report? I don't. Thank you. Okay. Any, any other questions, comments, concerns on that? Okay. Uh, so uh, the finance. Well. Uh, 
let's see. Uh, the Finance Committee, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Lincoln uh, summarized that pretty good. Uh, where I, 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 it's my it's my belief that at the next Finance Committee meeting, we are going to uh, review the Article Two requests and provide the town administrator with any questions, comments, concerns. Um, so that he may use that information, may or may not use that information uh, while discussing with department heads in terms of trying to get to a uh, balanced budget. Um, I did have the chance to uh, watch the last DPW commissioner's meeting. Uh, Lincoln, you, you were in attendance, but, but it, got, it got, and you had to leave because of the Board of Selectmen's meeting, but it, but it did get interesting after that. Uh, well, yeah, so. <laughs> I saw it too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the board, the, the chairman, uh, the commissioners, DPW commissioners had a, uh, a lengthy discuss discussion in regards to the sewer force main project and, uh, in particular, whether or not they want to support the, the, what they call the alt add-ons to the bid, uh, which include utilizing the old pipe for, for, as a redundant pipe. So uh, rehabbing it. Inspection, if it, if it passes inspection, then, then to rehab it. Um, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if it was unanimous, but, but it was definitely a consensus of that, that uh, uh, the DPW commissioners that they were not in favor of that for, for many reasons. Uh, one, costs. Two was the viability for, for you know so so the scope of work is to line the interior of the if viable line the interior of the old pipe. However, concerns were made that well, what happens in X amount of years if that pipe continues to corrode from the outside, which is go, which is what, what's going on now, that the lot the liner is not a structural liner. It's 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 it's, it's and therefore, if anything were to happen, it's possible that that would not support. An area that had further corrosion. So, uh, so essentially, they 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 um, they were going to they were. I'm assuming it's, it, they're going to request environmental partners to provide a revised cost estimate for just the um, the, the 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 base plan, which was to remove to to replace the entire line, along with you know some 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 uh, water line repair uh, upgrades in a certain area. And uh, I asked, uh, I asked for a copy of that. They have not, um, I have not received it yet. As soon as I do, I'll, I'll, I'll forward it to this committee. Um, during that meeting, they mentioned it's about $2 million difference. But if you add on the uh, owner's rep charges, it, it bumps up to about a $2.8 million difference. So it's a, it's a $2.8 million uh, difference, savings. Um, they mentioned briefly the DPW building. They have not received a feasibility study report on that. Um, I haven't heard anything else uh, on that. Um, I'm not sure if, it, I'm not sure Lincoln, if you wanna add anything to that or not. I don't, I mean, they, they did, the uh, DPW did put in a request for that, um, but there is no feasibility study. Uh, in existence, a finalized feasibility study at this point. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I'm going to comment on that. Um, see if I can do this right. So the concerns I've had, and, and I've expressed them in past meetings, and, and some others in this committee have, 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 have as well, is that the, the, the timing of a proposed project to getting recommendations and votes seems to be the, the, the window is, is very sh small. And uh, I, I, I have major, major concerns on that. Um, only, you know, one is that, you know, it, it, we, we've, we saw it here during the, the forced sewer main project is that there are committees out there and boards that allow for vetting of this information to get it available to the to the townspeople to the voters so they could have a uh an ability to have some kind of understanding uh prior to town meeting 
Um, so th that that's the that's the main concern I, I have there. Um, secondly, is that and and we saw it here with the, with the forced sewer main, is that a a a department that is managed by uh, commissioners are presenting a, 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 an article request with, with the value, with the dollar value, when, when their commissioners have not completely vetted it out on their own. So, I mean, everybody knows what I'm talking about, so I'll just, I'll just say it. The, the DPW presented to us a project and said, hey, give us $16 million. We want to go, and, and we want your recommendation because we want town meeting to approve $16 million and then the DPW is going to decide whether or not we want to spend the, all that. I think that kind of flies in the face of town meeting that, you know, you, you're taking something away from the ability for the town to govern themselves and, and know what they're going to spend money on when, you know, again, they're asking for, they're saying, give me a lot, but I, I might, we're going to decide whether or not we want to give us something we might not use at all. I, I, I have an issue with that. Just, just in terms of uh, 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 the way our town government is formed. Um, I don't know if any, you know, I didn't expect anyone to have comments on that, but if anyone does, you know, go, go right ahead. Go ahead, Fred. Uh, I just don't think that anything should be rushed. You know, it should be fully vetted. Uh, the taxpayer needs to understand what the project is. I don't think anyone questions the fact that they need a building. I mean, it's obvious they need a building and need it uh, desperately. Uh, I'd rather see us do something in the fall on a special town meeting and then, you know, if needed, a separate ballot uh, at that point in time when people have had time to, you know, really understand the project. Uh, the other thing, the warrant's closed now. I mean, granted, the selectmen can open it pretty easily. Uh, I don't know if they have that flavor even you know, to uh, reopen it for such a project, you know, where, you know, you're getting all the information at the last hour, the last minute, you know, you need to have it on a ballot as well. I'm going to go under that assumption. There's no way our town can afford it without a debt exclusion. Uh, you know, so you're going to have that aspect too. You know, how much lead time do you need for printers and all those things, you know, to be able to have it done properly. You know, so... I, I just would like to see it get done properly, so to speak, not right. Yeah, go ahead. Lincoln. I just like to clarify one thing. So, with the sewer force main, there is no ballot necessary, right. because just just to clarify that because it's because right. it's it, it's being right. So the debt service on that project, it, it will be coming from the enterprise fund, and therefore you know it, it's not subject to the limits of proposition two and a half. Um, that said, you know, I, I, I do wanna, you know, we are where we are at this moment in this planning for this, um, for this town meeting, but, you know, coming back to the conversation about the town meeting uh, article, article 38 of the annual town meeting of 2015, that article, you know, uh, says that uh, capital requests shall come to this committee by, I think it's October 1st. And then that the plan, a five-year plan is in place by January for, I think it's January 1st. And so you'll note that, the, <laughs> that those aren't sections that I, I'm gonna recommend changing. Those aren't things that I'm gonna recommend changing. And, and uh, I think that schedule makes a lot of sense and that's something that uh, I intend to uh, to work with departments to make sure that we're that we're in that schedule in the coming year. Right. So, so we, we've had that discussion in the past, prior to you, you being here, Lincoln. And uh, yeah, so the intent was, you know, uh, you know, prior uh, from 2015 until now, uh, that wasn't being done by this committee. It was our goal to do that by uh, to get more in line, to have our behavior more in line to Article 38, uh, uh, and um, you know, uh, you know, we, we, I, I set forth the goal, and it was kind of a consensus that it was a consensus that 
you know, we, we would, 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 would stick firm to those deadlines um, next year. So I had, a, I had a point to what I was saying. Um, so, right. So, so I, I guess, so, so, so as a town administrator, it, it sounds like you're, you're in tune, you have no issues with, in regards to those deadlines uh, set forth. I agree with those deadlines 100%. Okay. All right, perfect. All right. With, uh, with the caveat that's in the article that things can change, right? Something can come up, something can break. It becomes clear that we need X, Y, Z past January or past October. Um, but, but that's the caveat. And I'm, you know, I'm happy to say that that caveat's in the, in that article discussing, you know, so I, I think that makes perfect sense. Yep. Yeah. And that, that article, um, I, I was doing some research, that article uh, almost mimics identically from, um, I forget what year it was published, but from a, a state document. Uh, that, 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 um, it's, it's almost, it's almost verbatim. Um, so, which is fine, you know, just, just as a FYI. All right, yeah, go ahead, Fred. Uh, and just real, real brief. That, that was one of the uh, driving factors of trying to redo our matrix and being able to have our five-year plan so that as far as the school district was concerned, you'll already have by October 1st what we anticipate our articles or our needs to be. And we can start vetting at that point in time. May not have the article language, may not have an exact or a closer cost or a guesstimate, so to speak, due to procurement laws, but you'll have a good idea of the scope of the project, the necessity, the reasoning, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I think I spoke to Ernie uh, in, in this in this committee, and he mentioned that, that yeah, he's he has no issues with that with that October one deadline. All right. Uh, so, anything else on that? All right. So, so I'll open the floor to, to Josh um, with his uh, technology uh, capital requests. You did. Yeah, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so this year we had three articles. Um, I think one we I quickly talked about the uh, capital stabilization, which I unfortunately, obviously, if this year is not going to work, it's not going to work. But I, I need to highlight and I do it every year to make sure that uh, people understand, you know, the importance of obviously, uh, you know, saving the money. Uh, so when we actually do need something, uh, you know, significant, we have the money in the bank, if you will, to uh, accommodate the actual purchase. So uh, quickly, the uh, the two copiers we have that are the oldest copiers, um, uh, one at the fire station, which is uh, installed in 2010, and one at the uh, police station, which was installed with the building project back in 2011. Now, these copiers, uh, both of them, they don't have a million copies on them, but they are, you know, 10 and 11 years old. Um, you know, typically you try to get copiers in and out, if you will, uh, on a five-year lease, and I've been trying uh, to sort of move in that direction, if you will, to, uh, you know, provide us with the ability to, uh, to move this uh, type of purchase into the um, expense account instead of doing the, uh, you know, $6,000 or $9,000 uh, purchases on a, on a um, you know, capital basis. Uh, you know, the, the actual copiers, uh, just like a vehicle, I mean, the vehicle can have 30,000 miles on it, uh, but it can be 20 years old. Um, you know, and, and just because it doesn't have, you know, high mileage doesn't mean that it, uh, you know, it has low mileage rather, it doesn't mean that it's, uh, it's not going to uh, fall apart or break. I mean, we have consistent breakdowns of the copier at the, at the fire station. I'm sure you can, you know, feel, you know, free to connect with the fire chief um, on that particular, particular copier. Um, you know, it's not, not as bad as the, uh, you know, certainly not the police department's copy is not as bad as the fire department's copier at this point. But again, we, uh, my, my goal is to, again, get, try to get these copiers on a leasing agreement instead of, uh, you know, on, on a purchase. And we've been doing purchases uh, for years now when I first, you know, transitioned over to the town back in 2012. We had copiers in excess of 12 years old, uh, unfortunately, still you know running, and and those had quite a bit of mileage on them, if you will. I, I think they had close to a million or, or a million uh, two uh, for for copies on them. So 
um, you know, I try to keep things current, if you will, and obviously do, do what's in the best interest of not only the taxpayer, but also the departments to make sure they have what they need to succeed, if you will. So uh, I'd be happy to answer any other, you know, particular questions you might have. Um, I did review all this uh, with the finance committee. I provide the finance committee uh, with the detailed breakdown of every copy we have. Uh, you know, in the town with the installation dates, the condition, uh, you know, the uh, recommended replacement dates and so on and so forth. Mr. Chair, through you. Go ahead, Fred. Uh, Josh, uh, the maintenance agreement that we have, that's per copy, whether it be black and white or color, uh, does that include breakdowns, et cetera? Yes, the actual maintenance agreement, you know, it's, it's a great question, uh, Fred, you know, the, when we purchased the copiers initially uh, years ago, the state contract actually included a two year uh, warranty on the black and white copiers and a one year warranty on color copiers. Uh, I'd say probably uh, two or maybe three years ago, they did away with that. Uh, why? I don't know. I don't know how the, you know, the state negotiates contracts or how they negotiate out these incentives, but if you will, uh, you know, obviously warranties are critically important considering the fact that you're, you know, making an upfront purchase like this. And, uh, you know, we re relied heavily on the fact that we're making a purchase and we're going to have it for, you know, a length of time. Uh, so the first few years were sort of covered, if you will, for, you know, from a, uh, an expense standpoint. Uh, but, you know, definitely a great question. We do have an, you know, annual maintenance agreement and it does pay for, um, you know, the cost of toner as well as uh, any repairs, uh, you know, that need to be made on, on the devices. So there is no additional out-of-pocket expenses uh, unless you go over the threshold of the annual allotment for the number of copies that are specified in the agreement. What do they charge us for that? Is it per copy or per click? Yes, it's per. It's, it's it's extremely low. I mean, you're talking less than a, basically a penny, uh, you know, for the black and white stuff. And yeah, how much uh, you know, I'd have to look at the actual agreement. I don't have it in front of me, unfortunately, but you know, we're talking probably less than, you know, uh, three cents, I'm sure. I mean, uh, you know, we've looked across the board and compared and contrast, uh, you know, a couple of different, um, you know, vendors, you know, years ago, and we did all this and put all these uh, details together to come up with a, you know, a solution that was going to work for, uh, for the town as far as, the, you know, we're obviously not looking, we're looking for a great, you know, uh, price, if you will, but also want to make sure that we have, you know, what we need to make sure that uh, the copiers are not going to be, uh, you know, down. I mean, the biggest problem we have right now uh, is the fact that as these copiers age, uh, the part availability becomes much more difficult. And the fact that, you know, it could take, you know, I think it ended up taking us, you know, when we had an older copier in the building department, it took us probably three weeks to procure a part because the copier itself was in excess of 12 years old. Okay. And are they pulling, they pull the maintenance agreements when they can't get the parts as well, if I'm not mistaken. And you know, that personally happened to me in my business. Yeah, no, I mean, if you're, if you have the copier covered, it, it, you know, they, they still cover the actual copier, but the day that you let it lapse is the day that they no longer cover it. You can't, you know, re, you put the, you know, if you, the agreement lapses, let's say that you, you want to re up it, you can't re up it. You have to basically, you know, it's either you're on it or you're off it. You can't go back to it if, in fact, you know, the, um, you dropped off of the agreement. And I think that's what happened actually on the school side at one point, uh, which is why the phone system, uh, you know, was not covered for, you know, a period of time. Okay. Thanks. Sure. So, so Josh, you provided two different, well, two different scenarios, a purchase price and, and a lease option. D does the lease option include a, a maintenance? No, those prices that are just basically the, the actual equipment itself. So the, we have a separate, uh, you know, maintenance agreement that is provided. Basically we add on the copiers that as we purchase them, like I said, in the beginning, we had the warranty coverage on the state contracts, which is no longer. So uh, we have to add every new copier we purchase uh, or lease uh, into this agreement, um, you know, which roughly adds, you know, a, a few hundred dollars, depending on the cost. It's mostly uh, toner in the beginning because obviously the copier is newer. Uh, they're not expecting the copier to, you know, certainly break down in the first year, uh, you know, or have a major meltdown, if you will. But the uh, the actual maintenance agreement is a separate a separate agreement outside of the actual copier, whether it's purchased or leased. Well, uh, what's an what's an average maintenance agreement for a year? Uh, it's roughly about I think two thousand dollars for all of our copiers. Uh, and that includes the toner that we supply with the, for the copiers. And uh, they're all on a system where they're monitored. So when the copier needs, uh, gets down to like 5%, uh, 
uh, the actual toner is automatically shipped to the department, you know, for installation. So there's no lapse and, uh, you know, the toner is not running out, if you will. And if you were to estimate what the, what's the average lifespan, what would the average lifespan of the Canoka Minolta Visa C300i digital be? I mean, I, I know it's just, just, I'm not going to stick you to it. I won't, I won't, I won't keep it a hard number, but based on past experience of, of copiers, what would you anticipate that in keeping in mind, you know, the issue that you had in regards to parts, access, accessibility to parts, what do you, what would you anticipate a lifespan be? Uh, I mean, I, I, I'd say five years is probably a comfortable number. I mean, like I said, if you go over that uh, five year uh, number, you, you're looking at, you know, uh, software availability, potentially, depending on how long that, you know, the man manufacturer, they, they obviously, you know, stop at some point. Uh, of updating their software and you know they may provide you know uh, security fixes and you know patches and stuff like that for for critical things but for the most part functionality wise your copy is going to remain the same and you're not going to have any new functionality uh, that may be available to you for instance you know we've had copiers you know that were uh, you know older and we couldn't you know initially in the beginning you know years ago we had copiers that couldn't scan to email and, you know, we had newer copiers that, you know, other departments that, you know, ended up getting newer copiers had that functionality. And of course, once you do that for one department, everyone's looking for that same type of a, a service. So at the end of the day, um, you know, now I think pretty much all of our copiers at this point have that particular functionality. But uh, just again, I think five years is a realistic number. I mean, we're not doing um, crazy mileage, if you will, on these copiers. So I think, uh, you know, another, you know, um, avenue to look at too, as well, is that when we take these copiers out of service, uh, if we do, if we're purchasing them, uh, we can look at MuniBid to actually, uh, you know, potentially get some uh, money back, if you will, uh, when, when the copiers are basically ended a service here. Okay. So, so, so I, what I was going to originally, until you said that last comment, what I was going to say was, there's there's no advantage to leasing a copier, other than your instead of as, as it, other than the upfront cost. When you lease it, you don't have to pay the upfront cost. You're, you're just paying a, a, a monthly lease fee. Uh, correct. Basically, it's in your it's in your you know your, your operating budget essentially. So once it's in there, you know you basically you have the availability of the funding there to to commit to the actual lease you know over and over and over again. And you know the, I guess the the big factor is whether or not we want to continue to present these articles uh, of significance, if you will. Uh, you know, one being the typical cost uh, of these. You know, looking at the you know six thousand six thousand eight hundred and the nine thousand. I think you know the larger copy is in like the selectman's office and the collector's office. They're you know significantly larger you know copiers. So they're in a realm of like ten to eleven thousand dollar machines. Um, so you know, I guess that looking at the end of the day, it's you know, do we want to continue to to present these articles for you know, outright purchase, or I think you know, looking back at what we talked about at a finance committee meeting, where you know it's you know, roughly obviously depending on the copier, it could be a thousand, it could be fourteen hundred dollars more you're paying for the copier throughout the lease. Um, but you're basically, you know, the copier is coming in and it's going out and you're not basically uh, stuck with a, a dinosaur that's 13 years old. And, uh, you know, looking at the buyout, if we wanted to buy the copier out at the end of the lease, I, I believe they said that the, uh, the buyouts uh, 10 to 15% of the uh, initial, um, you know, purchase price. All right. So, so, so basically what I'm here, I think what I'm hearing is it, it would be, it'd be more cost of, it, it probably, it'd be more cost effective to purchase it because you may have, you may have a piece, uh, an item that's of value toward the end of its life, towards toward, at the end of five years Ver versus you, you have this item at the end of five years that you would have to give back because the lease is gone. Right. Yeah. You can look at it at both ways. I'm mean, like I said, you know, the, the ability, I mean, you know, yeah, I guess we could look at it and basically every five years turn it around and, and uh, you know, try to, you know, get it on muni bid and, and get some money for it to recapture the cost of uh, replacing the device. But like I said, you know, um, it, to my knowledge, it's been easier to, uh, you know, set it and forget it, if you will, and make sure that it's on a schedule uh, versus trying to, um, you know, present these articles every, you know, so often and, and try to get these significant, you know, costs together to, to procure the actual devices. Yeah. Go ahead, I'm Lincoln. No, Mr. Chairman, I was just going to say, so um, in the future, so this is sort of exactly the kind of article that I was talking about, right? So in fact, today, according to our current capital policy, these aren't capital items, right? 
they're, de- they're under $10,000. So, you know, obviously I know we've traditionally treated them as capital, but this is precisely the kind of article uh, that, you know, the kind of thing that in my professional opinion should be in the operating budget, not in a capital. Right. So, so I was just doing the math real quick. I mean, that would, that would increase the technology. This one item would, it would increase the technology budget assuming a five-year lifespan, 150 bucks. And ass- assuming that you're, assuming a five-year lifespan and assuming that, you know, maybe it would be even less if, if, if we're assuming a, a longer lifespan. So, so correct. And, you know, I can tell you that, <laughs> I mean, so I intend to have these, this, um, these amounts in the April 13th budget, not, as articles in the draft warrant. I mean, I can tell you right now. <laughs> so <laughs> these aren't going to be in the draft warrant. Sorry, Josh. I know we didn't talk about it before. Sorry. But they are going to be in the operating budget if, you know, it's, if it's demonstrated that we need them. And obviously, you know, it sounds like we do. Interesting. You, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, you know. I, yeah, I mean, they're I mean, not... He- I mean, is a technical matter. I mean, it's not to put too fine a point on it. And this is absolutely no criticism whatsoever of Josh. I know this is how we've done it, but it's a technical matter right now. They're not capital items because they're under $10,000, right? I mean. Right. And that's exactly, I mean, I think obviously is a perfect example of exactly what we talked about a short while ago and the fact that, yeah, they're below 10,000. I mean, we do have copiers that we just, you know, replaced, like I said, in the selectman's office, as well as the collector's office that were in excess of $10,000. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, whether we, uh, you know, put, I I assume put either the uh, entire amount into the uh, operating budget for that one year, as you're saying, or you put the monthly costs in there to accommodate the basically the yearly annual expense for release, depending on which way we end up going. Well, yeah. So, so, so the issue, the issue, go, go, going back to Lincoln's idea of putting stuff into the operating budget, the issue is that you need to start with a, with a, you need to start with a new item prior to, prior to putting costs into the operating budget in order to, you know, you have to start with the item before you start saving for the next item, for the, for the replacement of that item. Because if, so, so for example, you know, technology would, would like this. Say, say it's nine thousand dollars. So uh, you know, is, is the thought process increase his budget by nine thousand dollars, or is it to increase his budget by you know one hundred fifty dollars, which is nine thousand divided by sixty, five year lifespan? You know, so, so that's that. You know, I, I we're kind of reverting back to that that issue. So, and that's I something. Know. I mean, so from my perspective, that's something that I'm going to certainly rely on and and give a lot of deference to Josh's professional opinion as the IT director for the town, um, you know, and intend to, you know, we're going to have a f- further conversation about it, about, you know, the pros and cons of leasing versus buying. And, you know, I know I don't really have an answer for that right now, um, mm-hmm. but, you know, it's, it's part of the conversation and part of the part of what I want to know from Josh in his professional opinion. Yeah, I mean, I think, unfortunately, I think at this point in time, it's, it's too early, if you will. I think, you know, Frank, uh, you know, Lineham and I have had, you know, many conversations over the years. And, you know, I think with the start of, uh, you know, Lincoln's time here in Whitman, it's obviously been, uh, the, the budget's been obviously a more critical uh, aspect as, as this time is obviously consumed with trying to prepare a budget at this point. Um, you know, I think ho- hopefully moving forward and, in, 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 you know, as we continue to progress, we'll have, uh, you know, more meaningful meetings, if you will, and be able to talk more about uh, some of these types of purchases and uh, expenses for the actual departments, you know, not even just technology, but overall, all of us, I think, uh, I just think is, you know, there's just not enough time in a day as everyone here realizes that, uh, unfortunately, it's just, you know, we've got too much going on and we just got to understand and at some point we'll sit down and, and recapture uh, uh, some of these items and be able to come out hopefully with a better plan of action moving forward. All right. Um, so, so just the record, uh, Justin, you, you have, I think there's two requests of two copiers, uh, one at $8,969 purchase price. And se- I don't have the second one open. Do you mind just quoting the second one? No, the first one is uh, 6,800 for the fire. And the second one is 9,000 for the uh, police. Oh, okay. And it, okay. And the, so those are two 
capital p items that you're uh, <laughs> requesting. You're also you're in, in, in regards to this committee. Yeah, as as of today, yes, I, I guess they're capital. But based on the conversation, if in fact the policy changes, if if you will, at town meeting, then they may be other considered otherwise at another point in time. Yeah, I mean, so just to be clear, I don't intend for these to be on the draft warrant. I mean, if the board of selectmen wants them on the warrant, obviously they'll be on the warrant. But but to be clear, I mean, you know, I intend to include these in the operating budget. Um, so yeah, no, that's understood. You know, I mean. I'm just I'm just thinking uh, so just uh, just be playing devil's advocate I'm just thinking okay I, I and, and I agree with it I, I agree that an item like this that has a, a lifespan should be you know should you know should have a, a certain amount put into the uh, operating expense you know lifespan divided by cost divided by lifespan and, and, and that's that, that's the increase but however however, if 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 it's the intent of, to purchase this item, so now so what would have to happen for for, for the operating budget? It would have to increase by nine thousand dollars this year. In, in order, in, if, well, if 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 it was to be purchased and not leased, yes, correct. Right. Yes, yeah, and we have, and we have twelve copiers too, just so you know, everyone realizes that too. Wow. That, that was my, my question. Yeah, so we've got 12 copiers. I, if we were to increase the, yeah, the, the budget by $9,000 for this year, we probably want to find the whatever five or six year average of, of what the cost will be, increase it by that amount so that every year we can replace one or two copiers. So just Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, you know, the, the, the next copier up would be the senior center. And, uh, you know, I mean, we, we definitely do have, you know, uh, probably I'd say a handful of copiers that are newer from 2018 through 2019. Uh, but we do have, you know, the senior center is next on the list uh, followed by the DPW. So there are copiers that are in line and I have the spreadsheet and I can certainly send it to everyone if we want to see it um, that details all this information. So. Chair? Yes, go ahead. Uh, just a stupid question. Would these stay under technology? Or if we're looking simply at $180 a month increase uh, for the police department, would that $180 go to the police department's operating budget for that to increase, you know, in order to make the lease payments? This this is going to be in the IT okay. uh, uh, budget so that Josh can do his management role of finding efficiencies and with, you know, with finding efficiencies on contracts, I mean, it's right. So it's it's Josh's job to figure out how we can most efficiently get copying services. Not, um, I want the, for example, fire chief to focus on fighting fires and not thinking about, you know, copy releases. Absolutely, and that's that's why we centralized the uh, a lot of the expenses in the beginning. You know, back in I think 2012, 2013, we centralized a lot of the expenses uh, from various departments that were basically being uh, handled uh, locally, if you will, in, in each one of the departments. And they, I think all the department heads agreed that that was the best, uh, uh, you know, thing to do, uh, considering the fact that uh, you know it's it's part of technology; it's not part of the um, the department itself. So, yeah, and. Just one more thing, and this is just a personal uh, perhaps thought. If they're not giving us a minimum charge on our service contract, uh, for instance, you know, this uh, 300i that uh, is at the police station, you know, it has some very nice features to it. Uh, I could see the senior center being able to use the folding, the dupe. Uh, you know, the duplexing, the punch, the stapling, et cetera. Uh, you know, if there's no, if they're not charging us a minimum for the contract to be able to utilize that over there, because it would obviously be, you know, very low volume, uh, that might be a win-win for be able, being able to repurpose some equipment too. Yeah, we work very closely. I work very closely with all the department heads to figure out, you know, what it is that we can do to make things more efficient and what they need and, and, and uh, you know, versus what they want, if you will. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, we're trying, we can, you know, we can only do with what obviously we, we can as far as the funding concern goes. But 
uh, we try to be as diligent as we can. And I think, you know, standardization is key here. And the fact that, you know, uh, over the years, we've trying to, uh, been trying to standardize a lot of the stuff that we do, because, you know, prior to that, it was, you know, uh, someone was doing this, other person was doing that. And we were all over the road as far as what was being, you know, uh, purchased. And the fact that, you know, all of our copiers now, for the most part, uh, you know, with the exception of obviously speed, have all the same functionality. They may have, you know, folding and, and, and you know, and whatever it is, punching and stapling. And it, it just, you know, when you start to getting around to the fact that, you know, one department has uh, punching, the other department doesn't have it. The other department has stapling, but this, I mean, it just, it doesn't make sense. You know, if you're gonna do, do it, you might as well do it right and standardize what we're doing so that, um, you know, if one copier breaks down, for instance, in the town hall, well, there's another, another copier that has that same functionality next door, if you will, or up to, you know, uh, upstairs that you can go up to and do the exact same thing so all right uh so do you have any other comments uh, uh josh i uh, know i'm good thank you any other questions from the committee in regards to copiers all right um any uh, does the committee anybody uh, have any questions comments concerns on on any any other capital items mm -hmm. uh last uh, go ahead josh Sorry, I don't know if we were going to talk about this, but you had asked me to uh, take a look at the uh, phone system uh, capital project for the schools, um, you know, at the last meeting. And I've had uh, quite a few conversations with uh, Steve Burke on the school side. I unfortunately have not had a chance to catch up with Fred to uh, talk about some of this stuff. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, the, the project's definitely needed, if you will. Um, you know, the equipment is definitely old uh, and, and, you know, antiquated, if you will. And, and I, I think the important part here is, you know, uh, they're doing uh, their due diligence. Uh, we actually have another uh, vendor uh, presenting a quote shortly uh, with a similar system to what we're running in the, on the town side, which was a recommendation from uh, another vendor. Like I said, Steve and I had lengthy conversations over the past week. Uh, as to how we could approach doing things a little bit differently and, and you know, maybe, you know, take a look at what we're using on the town side. I, I personally, I'd rather see the same, you know, uh, system being used across, uh, you know, the schools as well as the towns. It just makes support and, and uh, functionality easier integration wise, if in fact, as I, you know, at the end of the day, we're connected, whether people realize it or not, we have a you know a connection to the schools and it's just not turned on. Um, and to be dialing 10 digits to get to the schools is kind of you know crazy if you ask me. And we should be able to dial the three or four digit extension and get to them and they should be able to do the same thing uh, to us. So uh, you know, at the end of the day, I, I reviewed the um, quotes that were received, uh, talked in length with Steve. And in my personal opinion is, you know, like I said it before at the last meeting, um, this is definitely a project that's required at this point. Um, I think, you know, hopefully we'll have a little bit better of insight into the last quote that's coming, I think, hopefully next week. Um, I'm not sure what the committee's, you know, uh, response to this will be as far as to whether you want to hold off. And I think it might make sense to, to wait another week or so, maybe at our next meeting, make a final decision as to whether we put this forward or we talk more about it and, and come up to a different conclusion. But like I said, um, I'm 100% for it. It needs to be done. Uh, they're just, they're just obviously, you know, tr trying to do their best and, and trying to make sure that everyone is on the same page when it comes to uh, the type of system. I mean, they're looking at a fully you know, hybrid system um, to be basically installed, which it, again is, is the, uh, I, I don't want to say the least expensive, but based on their overall uh, status currently right now with their networking, it's the only feasible option uh, at, the, at, the, at the cost level that they can afford. Go ahead, Fred. Uh, and, uh, I did actually run into Steve about an hour and a half ago, so uh, he did fill me in a little bit. Uh, the one thing, he's getting some estimates and hopefully they're worst case scenario because everything will still have to go out to bid anyways. Yes. And, you know, the great hope is, you know, once the project's approved and the money's appropriated, that the actual project will come in for less money. Mm -hmm. uh, but at least hopefully we have a doomsday you know, worst case scenario that we'll be coming with, you know, as a dollar and cent item. No, absolutely. I think at this point, you know, we're going to have to come up with a scenario based on, you know, uh, approving the project based on a not to exceed number, if you will. And I just don't know what type of a number we're going to use, whether, you know, obviously looking at the, uh, the previous quotes that came in, I think Justin had made a comment last time, if I'm not mistaken, as to why the discrepancy, if you will, I think there was a couple of thousand dollars off, if you will, 
And, uh, you know, some last minute uh, things I think were added or, or forgotten, if you will, in the first quote that, that were, you know, uh, found on the, on, the, on the second quote when they went through the uh, scenario to, pro you know, provide the actual proposal. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, from Fred's perspective, I clearly understand they need the phone system. It's a critical piece of communication, if you will. And if, in fact, it does fail uh, mid-year, I think we're going to pay, you know, probably twice the amount of money because it's going to be an emergency replacement. Uh, and unfortunately, um, you know, whether it be bid out or not, it's going to be more expensive uh, to, to get something done uh, immediately. And just to, to piggyback on that, uh, I think the what Steve had mentioned to me earlier, and I would get 100% clarification, is the carousel number that we had used or received last year was they were still sticking to that number, uh, so to speak. Uh, I believe that's the number that Hansen utilized and Hansen's approved uh, the project for both of their schools in Hansen plus what was requested for the high school, you know, for their portion of the regional project. So, you know, I would, I would hope that we would want to do something at least, you know, to match that, so to speak comes in for less great if it's going to be more then if we make an adjustment i would think that the district would have to go back to hansen and say you know here it is because there's nothing going to be muddier than getting the you know requests back and ending up with a cost that's you know uh, more than what uh, one town has approved but the other town has you know been uh, a little bit shy in so to speak Yes, thank you. Yeah, you actually filled in the gap because that was one of the things that I did send to uh, the Mr. Chairman is uh, the uh, special town meeting uh, votes from Hanson showing the actual uh, articles were approved for the phone systems at the Indian Head as well as Hanson Middle and the uh, high school's uh, share. I believe from what Steve had mentioned to me, I believe that uh, the schools were being uh, presenting Hanson with the additional uh, cost for that. I'm, I'm not sure if that's, you know, uh, 100%, but. That hasn't been articulated to me yet. Okay. And it right. could be, you know, I mean, I've been up the school every single day this week between, you know, school committee meetings, negotiation meetings, uh, subcommittee search committee, you know, searches. It, it's been fun. <laughs> this has been a fun, fun week. So within that aspect and that question is, is like, you know, from the uh, funding standpoint, for whatever reason, if we were to uh, come up with a not to exceed number and that number, you know, exceeded by $3,000, is that something the district could pick up based on the fact that, it, you know, um, they've handled? Who, who knows how it would go? I mean, at this point, you know, what our concern should be here is that we have enough money for the two Whitman schools and we can battle it out over the high school portion. Uh, you know, that, at least that's the way I would look at it. Wanting to make sure that we have the middle, uh, middle school, Conley and Duval uh, funded properly. And also to fund the high school properly because I think a lot of the brains of the project are gonna be located there. You know, so, and that's obviously subject to the 60-40 split. So does the committee have any recommendations at this point? Any other comments? Or, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to step on the chairman's toes there, but. Yeah, no, I wasn't anticipating uh, voting on it, but if, if you're looking for, uh, if you're looking for a uh, consensus, uh, we, we could do that if, if, if that's something that you need. I would ask if we could wait until, you know, at minimum our next meeting. Okay. And let us get, you know, more uh, solid information. Okay. Yeah. So uh, th that brings up a good point. Uh, so I was waiting. Um, I was waiting for uh, Lincoln's. Uh, I was waiting for the warrant to close, in order to reconcile uh, the list uh, of warrant articles provided to the board of selectmen versus the list of warrant article requests uh, for, uh, submitted to us, uh, in order to get department heads in for discussion. So uh, some department heads mentioned uh, the month of March. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna reply back to them and see if uh, the month of uh, well uh, I don't have my schedule on me but uh, likely the month of April uh, they're willing to come in um, and uh, discuss their uh, capital what's capital article requests uh, for 2022 um, so that brings another 
uh, question I have to link, and I'm not sure if you're going to be able to answer this tonight or not. But um, it's always my goal. Well, it's, it's my goal this year as chairman, and 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 I think it's it's kind of the, a goal of the finance committee is that recommendations get made in time for them to be printed onto the warrant. Um, is there? Uh, do you know that 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 deadline that you would that the board of selectmen would need recommendations from this board in order for it to be printed on the warrant? Not at this moment, but I will yeah. early next week. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Fred, go ahead. Uh, just thinking, if the chair would like, and uh, April 1st is going to be probably a weird meeting for me because uh, they did, uh, they've thrown out a date of 4 1 as a negotiation meeting uh, date. Now that would start well in advance of this committee, but who knows how long it's going to go. And we do spend a lot of time sitting in a room looking at the wall, so to speak. Uh, you know, so that being said, I would just log in from my, either my iPad or my, uh, you know, laptop, but I can have Steve Burke appear if that would be good. So we can vet out any questions whatsoever on the phone project. Uh, that might not be a bad idea in my mind, you know, to have done, you know, I can request that as far as that goes. And I'm sure he'd be willing as long as he has the time. So you're proposing to have the, the the school district come in on April 1st and talk talk about their the yeah. phone system. Uh, Specifically, we'll, Steve Burke, who's the one who's spearheading that. Yeah. Um, there there are other non technology related items that the school is asking for. Um, well, I think you know that the uh, Ernie was in uh, a few meetings ago. I I don't know if uh, yeah. So if I could just take a a quick. Uh, yes or no like does does anyone on this committee have any further questions on the Whitman Hanson Regional School District capital articles that are not phone based does anyone have questions further questions yeah so it's okay so Fred so yeah so it sounds like this committee is prepared to make votes at, 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 at in regards to those items the only remaining questions are the phone so short answer yes that'd be perfect okay great I'll uh I'll shoot off an email to George and get that squared away Okay. All right. Uh, anything else on that? Anything else in, in general in regards to capital? All right. Uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to adjourn. No, I'll make that motion. Fred? Second. Justin uh, seconds. Um, roll call. Uh, Justin? Yes. Lincoln? Yes. Bob? Is uh, muted, but I, I saw his mouth motions. Yes. Yes. Josh? Yes. Yes. Aaron Taylor. Yes. Fred Small. Yes. David. Yes. At seven o five. All right. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Wonderful evening, everyone.